known my next guest for a long time, uh, mostly known him online, which is uh, appropriate for the topic we're about to discuss. Rob Call, K-A-L-L, is, uh, among other things, the editor and proprietor of opednews.com, which is a progressive uh, news and information website. He is, uh, among other things, a journalist, an inventor. He's been around uh, the world of software, as I was many years ago. And he has a new book out now, kind of, in my mind, synthesizing a little bit uh, those different areas. It's called The Bottom-Up Revolution, Mastering the Emerging World of Connectivity. So first of all, Rob Call, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for having me. And secondly, so tell us about, I'm going to ask you a two-part question, the, briefly about the book, and then why you wrote it. Okay. So, well, I wrote the book. I'll, I'll start with the second part. I wrote the book because I, I got fascinated with the idea of bottom up. I, I my website opendnews.com was starting to take off, and I found that the more bottom up an approach I took to it, the more I gave power and decision making to the users, to the writers, to the editors, to the readers the better it did. And that fascinated me. So I wanted to understand Bottom Up better. So I started a radio show, Bottom Up Show, which is available on Pacifica and Progressive Radio Networks. And I learned a lot. I learned, first of all, that most people don't have much of a clue about Bottom Up beyond the very minimal basics. Uh, most people think of Bottom Up as grassroots or wisdom of the crowd or crowdfunding. And it's a lot more than that. So I started interviewing people and I got lucky. And in the beginning, I had a chance to interview Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, and Craig Newmark, the founder of Craigslist, Ariana Huffington, Bernie Sanders, lots of people, hundreds and hundreds of people. And I, I came up with a really different understanding of what bottom up is. And so the book, the goal of the book is to get people to see the world through more bottom up eyes, to see the opportunities and the possibilities for bottom up, see how it's a good thing and to see top down and how there, I think there's too much top down in the world. I think that it, top down is, is, is relatively new to humanity. Humans evolved over literally millions of years to be bottom up beings uh, living most of those millions of years in hunter gatherer bands of 30 to 80 people. And they were bottom up because they thought about each other and they took care of each other and they cooperated with each other and they literally saw the world. And there, there are still two, about 250 million indigenous people living on the planet now. So we know about them. They, they think about how everybody else will be affected by their behavior. Native Americans have a saying the, 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 based on the idea of seven generations, make a decision based on how it's going to affect seven generations. And I think that we need to return to bottom up. And the great news is that our technology, the Internet and smartphones have catalyzed a return to bottom up. And one, one of the things I've learned is that we literally have hundreds of genes that are mostly repressed, or many of them are repressed, that are bottom-up genes that uh, ha give us the potential to be much more bottom-up than we are. And I think that's a wonderful thing because it, it, it's a kind of a power, it's a kind of an intelligence that I think once you tap it, it changes who you are, it changes how you relate to people, it changes how you work, it changes how you do business. And uh, I think that we need that. It, it, the the bottom-up revolution, which I base my book title on, is well underway. I mean, history, for example. You know, Howard Zinn, uh, he started or was one of the pioneers in bottom-up history with his people's history of the United States. Instead of looking at kings and rulers and generals, he looked at workers and soldiers and farmers. And bottom-up history has started about 40 years ago, and basically it's become the dominant kind of history that's taught now at universities. And that's so important because when you teach people top-down history, they think that the people who can make change happen are kings and rulers and generals. If you teach them bottom-up history, then it teaches them that anybody can make changes happen and have, have the power 
to to make a difference in the world. Well, I wouldn't, you know, first of all, Rob, call everything you're saying is a thousand percent in in tune with my philosophy and the way I write, the way I I talk, and the way I I think. Um, except I, the one word I would change, and I don't mean to nitpick because I, I, I know, I, I strongly suspect you agree. The one word I would change when you said that anybody can make change, I would argue that any group of people can make change. That what you're really, uh, yeah, thank right? You. Okay. you know, feedback is bottom up and you gave, that's great feedback. It really is. People, you know, one of the things I write about, I have a whole chapter in the book on story and I talk about the hero's journey. You know, and, and all our movies, 99% of our movies have a hero's journey theme. Some person becomes super powerful and changes and saves the rest of the world or the community. And what I say is we need to have stories where the people, where the community, where the, there's a collective hero. And, you know, there, there, a handful of people could do that. You know, so, uh, people like uh, Shonda Rhimes, for example, you know, people who write the stories that, that go on Netflix and TV, they could they could start doing that and, and telling another story so that people could start believing it because it happens. It happens all the time. But, yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. Yeah, I, I knew you would. And I you know what I was thinking when I was uh, when I was reading your book, I was thinking of this quote from Ella Baker, who, as you know, was great uh, civil rights leader and teacher and advisor and strategist, visionary. She said, you didn't see me on television. You didn't see news stories about me. The kind of role I tried to play was to pick up pieces or put together pieces out of which I hoped organization might come. Then she said, my theory is strong people don't need strong leaders. That's one of my favorite quotes ever because the corollary to that in my mind is that leaders can disappoint the people, but if they, if they understand how to organize and act, the people are not likely to disappoint themselves. Great leaders find the people's strength and potentiate it and enable them to make the most of it. Yeah, and, and I think that's... Uh, I, I'm sure that, in a sense, that's one of the inspirations for the book. You, uh, who, who did you see? I mean, there's so much that can be said on this topic, and you know, I might, you know, as I say, I've explored related areas myself. Who did you see as the audience for this book? Yeah, that was a tough one, and I, because I, 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 what I've tried to do with this book is put together a, a kind of a compendium of all different ways of thinking about bottom up. So there's a chapter on bottom up personal that deals with community and health, spirituality. There's a chapter on media and the arts. There's a chapter on economics, bottom up economics. And then there's another chapter, bottom up revolution, which is about politics and power and activism and transparency. Um, and then in the beginning of the book is a kind of an introduction. It get, gets into some of the basic ideas, you know, because one thing I believe is that most people know a lot about bottom up already, but they, they haven't put their hands on it. There's that old story about the, the blind wise ones who are put in a room and they're told to figure out what's there. One says a, a tree trunk, another says a rug, another says a hose, another says a rope, another says uh, a, a, a spear, and they're all touching an elephant. And I think that with between crowdsourcing and the comments uh, on Yelp and, and all the different ways that we have social media and, and connection, that it's, it's the bottom-up elephant. And that's... Well, uh, you know, and here's what an integrative thinker I am, Rob Call, author of The Bottom-Up Revolution. I hear that story about the blind stages and the ele blind sages and the elephant, and I think nobody ever says how the elephant felt about it. And to me, <laughs> the missing equation is empathy for the elephant who was getting annoyed by all these people touching touching it. But uh, I, obviously, I'm just being lighthearted there. But uh, you know, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about uh, in the context of of your book, and I know it's something you, you must have thought about. Some of us remember when the internet was first uh, coming into public awareness, 
and all the sort of in digital utopianism that accompanied the uh, birth of the internet. And the belief, in effect, they didn't use this language, they didn't say it would be a bottom-up revolution, but that was the message, that we would have collective wisdom, we would have the wisdom of the crowds acting in real time, we would have uh, um, you know, a, a collective, a new way of engaging in democracy, a new way of of engaging in scholarship, a new egalitarianism, intellectual and otherwise. And instead, we got Pepe the Frog, and you know, and cat memes. And I'm obviously a be a little bit like uh, mimicking what a you know what what a cranky person might say, but. Uh, so far, the internet has not played, it's, it's great, some great things have happened as a result of connectivity, but we haven't had that uh, revolution from the bottom up in any area of sphere. It's been monetized and people's behavior has been manipulated and so on. Where does that fit into the entire thesis you're presenting in this book? You know, with, with, I, I'll, I'll take a step back. I, I'm, I'm a critic of civilization. Uh, before before there was civilization, people were bottom up, and they were they had a lot more empathy, a lot more compassion. Their their mirror neurons were really humming, and civilization came and it brought centralization and hierarchy and domination and slavery and repression of a lot of our bottom upness, and. Uh, but civilization is great. Civilization does wonderful things. It's a combination of both. And mm. I think that the the, the bottom-up revolution that's underway is the same thing. I mean, the, the technology that enables a, a teenager to create a YouTube following that gives that teenager, uh, through the collective strength of the followers, a lot of influence uh, is also causing problems, too. And it, 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 it's, it's endangering children who get too much screen time when their parents use a screen for a babysitter. It's, it's got pluses and minuses and, and, and we have to pay attention to that. You know, the, uh, the big platforms, we've got these, these mo monopolistic platforms, a handful of them that are way too powerful and out of control. And we never thought about how to deal with them. And we're just starting to even talk about that with, with the idea of platform cooperativism and 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 regulating them them a lot more than they have been uh, but I, I do think that we've seen change happen and I think that that the technology has enabled people to organize more effectively create groups more effectively there are a lot of ways that the book gets into about how how bottom up is enabled it also gets into some of the liabilities and problems too and they, there are both and I think we need to have this conversation. And yeah, no, I, I absolutely couldn't agree more, and I think that's an excellent answer. I, I, I think your point about being a critic of civilization, but it having good qualities, uh, is not only a good one. It made me think of uh, of Mahatma Gandhi's great line when he visited England, and he was asked by reporters, "What do you think of Western civilization?" And you probably know the quote. He said, "I think it would be a good idea." Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have heard. Yeah. I, I haven't thought about it in a while, but yes, I, I, I need to write, get that one down. Yeah, it's, it's a great one. Yeah. yeah. So, Western, civiliz Western civilization has been perhaps among the most top down, the most oppressive and repressive. Uh, so, yeah, it needs a lot of work. It needs uh, a lot of uh, trimming. <laughs> I know, including the internet, although I do appreciate the ability to hear that Otis Redding B-side from 1967 that I haven't heard in many years, whenever and wherever I want to, and I should not take that for granted. Um, so what, in closing, I guess, would you want people to know about your book, Rob Call? Well, I, I think that if, you, if the book opens your eyes in a couple ways, you know, the happiness is bottom up. Uh, you can't do business without taking a bottom up approach anymore. If, if it opens your eyes so you can see bottom up in your life and see bottom up opportunities, see top down problems that need to be changed, then the book has done its job. Uh, you can find out about the book at robcall.com, R O B K A L L.com. Uh, and uh, I, I would love to hear from you. If you have any questions, any suggestions, any thoughts, uh, my email is happier at gmail.com, H-A-P-P-I-E-R at gmail.com. And let's have a conversation. That's what Bottom Up's all about.
Well, good for you. I think that's crazy. I, I, I think that's great. And, and in closing, I, I don't, <laughs> in closing, I, I guess uh, um, the perfect example of what you call bottom up that I've mentioned a couple times is when uh, AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, was running in her primary against Joe Crowley, he tried to fake her out by, because he assumed he would be the winner. And he said, well, if, I, if, if you win this primary, which he didn't think would happen, I will support you. Will you say the same about me? And uh, because he assumed he was trapping her into a commitment she had to keep. And her answer was, well, I don't know, because I belong to a movement and we have to decide together. Uh, right. We make big decisions like this together. That's bottom up, right? Absolutely. That comes out. I think that kind of comes out of Occupy, too. Right. I think it does. So Rob Call, author of The Bottom Up Revolution, Mastering the Emergent, the Emerging World of Connectivity. Uh, thanks for writing it and thanks for coming on the program. Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. Same.